Now, if you guys want to be a part of the live mailbags here at the Cowboys Report, then you got to be subscribed. That's the only way to get the notification when we go live. And going forward, we've got the ability to do subscriber-only chats. Might be doing those pretty frequently here for the Dallas Cowboys Report mailbags. First up from Thomas Leach, Demarcus Lawrence, back problems have me concerned. Think the Cowboys bring an outside help, or do you think we have the answer on the roster? I don't think the Cowboys' mindset right now is one of concern around Demarcus Lawrence. I think Jerry had said it was going to be when camp breaks, he might be good to go. The, I am a little bit worried here about Demarcus Lawrence. Uh, he's not going to be back, I don't think, in time for uh, the Hall of Fame game, so I don't think he's going to play anyway. So I'm not that concerned. Um, if he misses time, yeah, I want to bring somebody in. Other than that, I feel okay right now for the Cowboys and for Demarcus Lawrence. From the Rainbow Cow, CD will be a top 18 receiver this season. Mark my words. Look, I am all aboard the CD Lamb hype train as well, and he's going to have a big time season. From Arise CD, if our defense is somehow top five, is it real possible? If the Cowboys have a top five defense, they will be a Super Bowl favorite. They should have a top five offense, and the only way they get a top five defense is, is if the offense is also top five because they're so good. If, it, if it's a top five defense, an actually true top five defense, this is going to be an elite team. This will be maybe the best team in the NFL if they've got a top five offense and a top five defense. But that's not my expectation. From Big Sad, assuming no one gets injured, if we get Xavier Howard, what are the odds of going to the NFC Championship? Um, I feel better about it. I don't, again, I don't think it's going to happen. Keep that in mind. The cost probably too much for Steven and Jerry and Will McClay, whatever. Uh, I think they become a, they're already the NFC's favorites. I think they become an 11 potentially win team, boosts them up maybe one from what I got right now. I'd say maybe third or fourth in the NFC Champions Rods. Of course, we've got the Packers. I still think, at least for now, lead the way. And one of the teams coming out of the NFC West, whichever one that ends up being. From Reed Todd 32, Randy Gregory breakout season. I have already consumed all of the Kool-Aid right now for Randy Gregory. I, I am sold on him having a major breakout year. I think Gregory is going to have an eight or more sack season. So, yes, I agree with you on that one. From Tyrion, and words outside of air and of, I don't know how to pronounce that last one. Uh, what role do you think Malik Hooker has in this defense? Is he starting or will he be a rotational piece? Um, look, I think in the end that Hooker's role is very much unclear, very much up in the air. I don't know what if he's going to start or be a rotational piece. It could be a little bit of both. I think there will be an open competition for the Cowboys at safety. I think Donovan Wilson ends up being one guy. What I don't know, though, is if it's just Hooker or more than him on that front. So... If it's Hooker or Casey, I should say. I think that's going to be determined as camp in the preseason gets going a little bit more. From Xavier Clark, should Dallas trade for Gardner Minshew or Nick Foles now? Um, one of these guys I'm intrigued by. The other I'm not. I, I like the idea of going out and adding Gardner, or Gardner Minshew. If you can get him for a day three pick, which I'm not sure you can, I say go for it. Two years left. Under a million per year, you take care of your backup quarterback room, and everything's in great shape from that perspective. So I like it for Minshew. Nick Foles, I'm out on. A, he's not that good. B, there's money issues here. The Cowboys own $4 million guaranteed this year. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's next year because the Bears stupidly structured his contract. That is the issue. He has an $8 million cap hit. And between his guaranteed base salary and a guaranteed roster bonus, he's got $5 million guaranteed next year. So do you want to pay him $9 million for one year? Do you want to pay him you know, $12 million over two years? It's not really something I'm trying to do. Andy Dalton's 10x, or not 10x, but 5x what Nick Foles is. 
And the Cowboys paid Dalton less than they paid Foles, or would pay Foles. I'm out on Foles, interested though in Gardner Minshew. I want you guys now to name a player who you want to trade for. It could be Minshew, could be Foles, could be somebody else. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down, and get your votes in. Super chat from King Shadow 9 Sorry if this has been answered, but how successful do you believe Lincoln Cooker could be with the Cowboys if he stays healthy? If he's healthy, he could actually be a very good starting caliber safety. Haven't been too many of those game in and game out for Dallas. For Hooker, it all comes down to how healthy he is and how recovered and back to his peak form he is coming off a litany of injuries. For a super chat from Timothy, who super chat earlier and then got the question in there. You figured it out, my friend. Good job. Do you think Zeke can lead the NFL in rushing with him being in best shape of his NFL career so far? Kind of actually is. Um, in terms of him leading the NFL in rushing, that would be an objectively good thing because that comes if the Cowboys are winning games. So Zeke leading the NFL in rushing yards will also be a part of the Cowboys if the offense has success and the defense is better. I think Zeke will be back to closer to his peak form. Maybe not quite peak, but at least close to it. I don't know, however, if he'll actually lead the NFL in rushing. Tennessee and Cleveland and Minnesota – they're going to run the ball a lot more than I think the Cowboys will. So if he can be top five, I'll be very happy. We are trying to get to 100,000 subscribers here at the Dallas Cowboys Report. So I am once again asking you guys not just to subscribe, but also tell a friend. I know the 400 plus people watching live right now all have Cowboys fans or Cowboys friends who are, are fans as well. So tell them if you guys like the show, help us out. Get us more subscribers, YouTube.com slash Cowboys TV. Thomas Leach, is there a realistic chance LVE gets traded? Reports that multiple teams are looking for linebacker help. I think the Cowboys are leaning towards keeping LVE. Um, I think my mindset is that I think he starts with this team still, and they like him, so they're not out on him altogether. I think the most likely outcome here is LVE plays the year, hopefully bounces back, and then the Cowboys make a call to either keep him or let him leave in free agency, and hopefully, if that happens, get a comp pick. From Fat Sushi Man, if both Hooker and Casey ball out, who do you extend next year? Yes. Um, I think, like, upside-wise, Casey has proven more on the field. I think where they were drafted, perceived draft town, Hooker has more. I, whichever's cheaper, maybe, if, it, if it's a true 50-50 split. Um whichever one Dan Quinn wants, I guess. Like, if they both fall out, I'm happy. It's a good problem to have. From Izzy World, Jerry Jones always says he would do anything to win a Super Bowl, but when a star defensive player is he doesn't do anything. Why? So, note, the Cowboys did call about Howard before the draft. That was kept under wraps. I think we have to be realistic in the expectations of this organization. Jerry has said for years he'd do anything. And I do believe him when he says that he wants to do anything it would take. The difference here is what actually helps. Like, doing anything does not mean just signing every player who hits free agency. The Cowboys' mind says we want to do things that will help us win. It's a matter of do we think this is the right thing? to help us win. This organization has not gone all in. I think that's Stephen Jones more than Jerry. They view trying to win a Super Bowl as not just a one or two year window and get aggressive in terms of how they structure contracts, but keep that window open for several years. That's been the case when the quarterback's been healthy. Hasn't resulted yet in a win. Speaking of wins, I have upped the over under because I'm trying to see if we can open up the sports book here, the, the Cowboys Report sports book. But, but with me in charge, you guys picked the over on 10.5. So now it's 11.5, and we'll do a community post on this too. Over or under, 11.5 wins this year for the Cowboys. Get your votes in, O for over, or U for under. From Travis King, you think the offensive line will return to dominate this year? If they can be around top 10, top 7, that's about where I think they should be. I'll be pretty pleased on that one. I think that's the key area 
for the Cowboys. Dominant 2016 offensive line? I say no. I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be the case this year. From Con Crank, rate the Cowboys roster right now on a scale of 1 to 10. I would rate them a 7.5 out of 10. That feels about right. Um, 75 overall. You're not going to get to 10. It's probably out of 90. So I think that feels pretty fair for, for, for the Cowboys. From the Wizard, Danucci wins backup role. Uh, no, he is not. Um, he's not good. I'm sorry. That's just not not going to be the case for Ben Danucci and the Cowboys. I'm I'm basically out on him. Hopefully, I'm wrong come preseason time. Blazer Gaming. Then I want to get some super chats that came in here. Uh, if Zeke is in the best shape of his career, then can he be the rushing leader and benefit the team with the O line? Again, rushing leader is going to come down to a lot of carries. I'm not hoping I'm hoping for rushing leader, but I'm hoping to get maybe top five yards. That means he's closing games out pretty strong. Jordan Kane, trade for Minshew. Prescott's made of glass. Except he's not. Like, yes, I know he's got the latissimus strain right now, and he busted up his ankle last year. He's missed only games last year. Like, Dak Prescott is not made of glass. Carson Wentz is made of glass, not Dak Prescott. That's, I disagree with that take altogether. From my burner account, what player has been the biggest camp surprise? Also, last super, I would still trade for Mitchell for, for a fourth or fifth round pick. I'm in. Uh, biggest camp surprise from a positive standpoint? I think may, maybe it's Malik Turner. Uh, I, I have viewed him as the forgotten man at the wide receiver room. So I think from that perspective, like I think Blake Turner is trying to fight for Roth's spot. I think that's the name to keep an eye out for. Uh, negative su surprises, I don't want to do that one. We'll keep positive today. From Cool, Alex, what are the chances that Nashawn Wright starts? I still think Anthony Brown and Kelvin just have a better chance to start. I think that side will get better clarity as the, pan, or as the pads stay on, and really more importantly, into the preseason. Christian Hogan, could Connor Williams start at center and then McGovern at left guard? The Cowboys have been giving Connor Williams at the reps as the backup center, and I don't love that. Like, if he's got to start at center, I've, I've got concerns there a lot more than I do at left guard. I am... A little bit confused as to why McGovern hasn't had reps at center. Feels like that's something the Cowboys should do. Um, I think in reality, though, it ends up being Williams at left guard, Biotish at center. If one of those guys gets hurt, McGovern slides in at left guard, and Williams or Biotish, if it's healthy, sticks at center. There's really two spots open right now at left guard at center, and they're really not all that open. So pick one to bench for me. Got to have one on, on, on the reserve list, and I know how a lot of you guys will vote, but we'll leave it open anyway. Type W for Connor Williams, or type in M for Connor McGovern, or B for Tyler Biotish. Marika Gray, how many games do you think Tyron Smith plays fully healthy this year? Um, I assume, like, getting through a full game like, is the fully healthy designation there. Over-under is 12.5. Like, he's played a lot of 13-game seasons, but he barely played it all last year. He's got a elbow tendonitis right now. I'm not concerned. If the back or neck flare up, different conversation. But I am worried, though, about Tyron Smith being out there for every single game. From Dustin, how do you like the defense right now? Um, my view of the defense not, has not changed. Frankly, outside of like maybe some individual players surprising you, the overall defense should be where you had them entering. Its Pads have barely been on. And the defense normally leads in camp because they have a better feel of what the play call is going to be. That matters. So I'm still hoping for, you know, around league average in terms of the defense. From Kelly Mack, what are the chances Keanu Neal doesn't make the team who's having trouble in coverage? All I'm going to say is that we will do some surprise roster cuts videos next week and the week after that or the week after that. I'm not sure which one it will go out. And uh, maybe you'll see kind of Neil on there. Just saying. Andres Gonzalez, I think we should split Hooker and Casey snaps. I think like in camp in the preseason, yes. You want to get them both reps with one, with the ones, excuse me, once Hooker is all up to speed. Beyond that, in games, I think you're just going to pick one and roll with one or 
go with the hot hand. I don't think you want to really be shuffling all that much unless you kind of have to. From Michael Hawkins, I think the DAC injury is overblown. He is fine and will be fine. It's, it's worth discussing. You have to discuss it. It is a shoulder issue after all, but I'm not concerned, and I don't think you guys should be concerned either. I think they're going to be just fine. 